Hello and welcome to another Horn Buzz interview. I am joined today by the newly appointed second horn of the Virginia Symphony, Helen Wardlin. Thank you so much for being here, Helen. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations on your upcoming season. Can you give us some insight into your performances this year? What are you most excited for? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have some awesome stuff programmed this year. Uh, I've been super excited to be part of uh, a symphony that seems to be really working on outreach and working on not just playing dead white men composers. Uh, we have a ton of collaborations with uh, living composers, like uh, Victor Wooten is coming and playing his uh, his newly written uh, electric bass concerto. I saw the premiere with uh, the Boston Symphony last year. It is a really cool piece. I'm so excited to play it. We're doing a ton of collaborations with uh, groups that aren't strictly classical music, uh, you know, trying to bring orchestral music into new audiences and all of that. We'll, we'll do combinations of uh, traditional orchestral works with new things or collaborations. Um, we also have some awesome like standard orchestral rep on the on the program uh we've got shasi five coming up one of my favorites definitely uh we're, we're doing the planets uh we have yo-yo ma coming and we're gonna do dvorak cello concerto with him i so excited cannot wait like amazing piece anyway and yo-yo ma like what <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like such a cool season. Like it, yeah. it sounds so exciting. I'm. I always really like to hear when orchestras are doing uh, stuff that aren't just your like middle of the road, like Brahms and Mozart and stuff, because I think it makes it more relatable to the audience. Young professionals like us, who you know, we went to school for classical music. This is what we do. Uh, we obviously are interested and you have the older audiences who if you've ever been to a symphony orchestra concert you, you know the population of the audience <laughs> and it's so important to try to figure out how to make it relatable exactly for younger audiences and bring people in who wouldn't necessarily have been involved otherwise. Well, I always like to talk to newly appointed musicians about their audition process because I find that it's really fresh in their mind. Can you talk a little bit about your audition journey? Like how many auditions did you take before you won this one? Like kind of what was your path? Stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this was my eighth audition. That was so, early. early. That, that, not not, not bad. Early. I know. And uh, at COVID, of course, threw a nice wrench in things, too. I, uh, I only took two auditions before everything shut down. And um, I advanced in the second one. I made it to semis, so that was very exciting. And then um, once things got started up again, like, I guess it was last fall, I, um, I had a successful audition for the uh, Seattle Symphony sublist, and I got to play with them a good few times last year. So that was incredible. Like, I am so grateful that my first professional orchestra experience wasn't in this job. So I had, like, a little bit of knowledge going in like kind of what I should be like what I should expect that sort of stuff I made it to super finals in one but that was a no higher and um I had advanced to semis in another one so I there were a couple where I didn't advance at all <laughs> and uh there were a few where I'd had success before so going into this one uh the more auditions you take, definitely the the easier the process gets. Like you you kind of know like what sort of weird things can come up. Like what sort of situation will the waiting area be like? This one was actually really interesting because um like uh when we were waiting after the semifinal round, there were few enough of us that like we all just started started chatting and it was a very friendly environment. Like, I'm sure you know, sometimes auditions can be really weird vibes and you've got that like, yeah, it, 
it was a little bit of a crazy audition because um, <laughs> it was all in one day. Oh, that's So a long day. it was, it was a really crazy day. Um, I got there at 8 a.m. I was, I was first drawn. Oh, Or I guess I, <laughs> that's I always was, great. oh my God. Yeah. I, I drew the first number for, uh, for that prelim. So I went at 9 a.m. And, uh, then there was a little bit of kicking around. One of my friends and I got lunch and then semis was like three or so, maybe four thirty by the time we got going. And then uh, it eventually wrapped up at 11.30 p.m. That was Oh, when wow. we heard. Yeah, that's Yeah, like, that's like, what, what, a uh, 10 hour, 11 hour day. yeah. Did they, because um, I know that Virginia, they were also hiring for, is it principal they also hired this year, right? Uh, no, this Or, audition, actually, it was all one audition. And okay. uh, it was second and fourth horn, and also what they called fifth horn. That's It was what really, my like, question was, was like, did they do it all in one, like one chunk and then hire several people? Or did they like have like, oh, I want to only audition for fourth horn or second horn? It, it was all one. We were all just auditioning for a spot. Okay. Did you like want, like when you envision your career, like did you want to be a second horn player or like what did you think like was going to be your first job? Ooh, um, I'm definitely more of a low horn gal. I, I like the low notes. It, I've gotten to a point in my playing where I can do the high notes and I have a, I have a good time doing the high notes, but not so much for my career, I think. And uh, I think second horn is where I want to hang out. I, I love like, uh, just like being the, the anchor. for the principal to do his thing. And uh, I get to play so much rep, like of course, Second Horn is still on the Mozart concertos and uh, Mozart symphonies and all of the like small two horn things. And sometimes I get to play high still, like anything pops, of course, you have one and two and three and four. Thanks pops composers. But yeah, I, I think Second Horn is, is probably what I wanna do. So this was perfect. <laughs> what is your biggest advice for people looking to win an orchestral job? I've heard a lot of audition talks where it's like, you figure everything out. You make a plan and you stick to it. You like all of this really crazy, like super specific planning out, doing mocks like a month out. I don't know about that, honestly. Like, clearly it works for some people, but I kind of want to be an advocate for a more, like, see what you need day to day. Like, figure out what the excerpts that need a little more love are. Hit those every day, but don't, like, go ham. I, uh, there's something I picked up from, uh, Andrew Bain. I, I worked with him for a couple summers, and, um... he has this concept where he plans it all out. He, he's like, okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 this. I don't so much do that. Um, but I love this concept he has of breaking things into five minute chunks. And that's all you get on a certain excerpt, technique, whatever it is. And then you move on to something completely different. So like, Brandenburg is is a troublesome spot for me. I have trouble getting into that character. So that would be something that I would want to hit every day, maybe a couple times a day. So I set my timer, I do just five minutes, and then I move on to something completely different. And then later in my practice session, I'll come back to Brandenburg and I'll end up doing maybe like even 20 minutes on it total. in the day, but I'll have broken it up. So I get that wonderful practice starting the excerpt, which I think is really, really tough. 
that's one of the worst things for me, like being able to get in that mode in the character. Um, so you get more practice doing that. And having that timer going and knowing you only have the five minutes, you, you really have to like dial into like, okay, what do we have to fix in this particular exit? What can I do in this five minutes that would be productive? I think it really like helps you focus is what I'm hearing. Yeah, exactly. Um, all of that is to say, um, figure out what works for you. Like definitely give some of the really structured things a try, um, but don't be afraid to lean into your style of preparation, I guess. And I, I think that's really good advice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because lots of people, I think we hear lots of like, uh, like you have to plan this out. You have to start like three months before the audition. I mean, I think, um, I believe it was Denise has like a 12 week plan that she's talked about and extensive to where she like, listens to excerpts and then plans them out and then like all the mock on and stuff. So I think, I think it's really refreshing to hear like someone say like, it doesn't have to be like all or nothing. Like you can still be successful in your own way. Absolutely. Like figure out what works for you. I don't be afraid to try these things and don't be afraid to not lean into them super hard if you're finding it's not working for you, if you're finding that's not productive preparation, I guess. Like, actually, I, uh, it, it was my early auditions, like the, the very first couple I took where I was like, I'm gonna listen to everything constantly. Like I, I made the playlist. <laughs> And uh, I, I was like, Tch. and uh, I got a little bit of excerpt brain from that where I just, I, I was too focused in and I, I sort of lost what I like playing about the horn and it got too like in the weeds, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes like a lot of sense. Like I, I, I really like relate to what you're saying because I think Sometimes, especially as like, like personally, I'm still trying to win a orchestral job. You know, I've won a couple of little stuff, but I really haven't had like that big, like blank horn and blank symphony. So I think like we definitely get mixed up in like, oh, this works for this person. Like, let me do it this way or let me do it like what someone else says. So I, I think what you're saying is super valid. Take auditions. Like, even if you feel like you're not ready to take auditions, like, go through the prep and go. Because the more you take, the more comfortable you get with the process. Like, it's really true. Like, my first couple, I was like, what am I supposed to do? What's happening? And, like, they're all different, of course, but just y you kind of figure out a general what to expect. And also it gives you a chance to practice and figure out the sort of preparation that works for you. Do you think like, um, like for instance, I live in Texas, right? And right now I'm having a big problem to where a lot of the local auditions that I am able to go to, I get waitlisted. So I find that, um, uh, in order for me to take auditions, like it is not only like a time endeavor, but it's also a money endeavor. Like I took an audition in uh, Michigan last spring. Like, do you think like first starting out, is it good to mostly stay like in your bubble until you kind of get the hang of it? Or do you really like recommend like take everything that you can right away? I was really lucky with my first auditions and um, I, I went to Northwestern for my undergrad and they actually had a funding program that uh, it's meant for like internships and not musicians, but it works for musicians too who are taking professional auditions. So my first auditions and actually I, uh, I got some funding from uh, NEC 
and my uh, my master's as well. So I was lucky enough to not have the the money question for my first auditions. Um, I would encourage people to seek out grants. Uh, I don't know about saying a lot of schools, but there are programs out there that can help financially support things. And especially when you're first starting out, I think that's a really valuable thing to look into. So you don't have that like, I just dropped $700. Uh, weighing over your head. Um, definitely take everything within driving distance you can. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I don't really <laughs> No, that. it's all like, like it's, it's, it's always just like something that you have to, I think, I think um, uh, some of us are like lucky like, enough to live in good areas, areas like, like, like um, uh, to where there are, there are lots, lots of like audition lots opportunities or stuff that you can drive to. And like, like even in Texas, Texas, like I'm, I'm very, very fortunate, fortunate that, that, you know, the Dallas, Dallas Symphony is only 30 minutes away. away. Houston, Houston Symphony is only four hours away. You know, Oklahoma City is only three hours away. So there's stuff. I always just like wonder the people who are not so fortunate, like that go to school in the middle of nowhere. Oh my God. You know, it must be so much harder for them. Oh my God. The fact that it does cost so much money to audition is a big problem. I yeah. Think. I think that's definitely a barrier to accessibility and all of the things we're trying to combat in the music world right now. Like, it, it's, it's hard, it's really hard. And, you know, you have to take some time off from whatever you're doing. Like, if, if you don't have a full-time job yet, if you're, uh, if you're freelancing while working a non-music job, you have to navigate taking time off that. I, definitely something the music world needs to deal with it's mm-hmm. not very equitable yeah, yeah. there's definitely yeah. a lot of um i would say barriers especially yeah. if you're not um from a certain i would say certain background mm-hmm. it can definitely be a huge issue definitely it, it's one of many many barriers out there <sighs> One thing, Virginia Symphony, uh, we have four, um, I'm blanking on the official title. I'm actually going to look it up so that I say it correctly. Let me find a, a Google. There's a Google. Um, Ah, yes, it's the uh, Virginia Symphony Orchestra African American Fellowship Program. Uh, So this is the first year they've done it. And uh, there are four fellows who, uh, they play with the symphony for most of our big concerts. They do a lot of outreach in um, local schools. And uh, they're also enrolled at Old Dominion University at the same time. So they'll come out of it with, I believe, a degree or at least like a, a certificate sort of program and they'll have this awesome experience playing with the Virginia Symphony Orchestra and I think programs like that are so important just like helping give disadvantaged backgrounds the access that those of us who have to put it bluntly more money at our fingertips and like access to these grants and stuff like I can only imagine how big a difference playing with a professional orchestra has. Like, you make it through resume rounds, and just the the sheer amount of experience. Definitely makes it easier. (laughs) Waitlisted is not fun. (laughs) I, uh, my my first couple auditions, I, uh, I had to email and be like, are you sure? Please let me know. Please. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't even work. Like, fun fact, I definitely, I'm not going to say 
what group it was, but last January, um, or actually I had applied to this group in December and they sent out the list right away. And the deadline, I believe for like the resume round was like, I believe the middle of January. Okay. okay. And then, so I was prepping and this was not like a, it wasn't a regular or orchestra audition. I'm not going to say exactly what it was, but it wasn't stuff that you normally play. So I was prepping lots of new stuff. And I remember I was seven weeks into my prep. So I was about halfway to the audition. The audition was in March. Mm -hmm. And I got the email that I was waitlisted and I said, okay, um, what can I do to, to like, can I just show up? Can I wait and see if someone doesn't come? And they said, um, well, your name's on a list, but you're number 47 on the list. And so all the people ahead of you have to basically say they're not coming before we could offer you a spot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that was very soul crushing. Um, like, I'm not going to say um, what group that was, but man, that, I think that was definitely the worst one. Uh, most, most of them are not that bad, even though I, um, I did just apply to another local ish orchestra whose deadline isn't in November, isn't until November. So I've already started uh, working on what I think that list is going to be. There's not an official list yet. Um, but I thought it's some of the standards for the position. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, we'll see if they let me in, but it, no one tells you that when you're getting into this, that like that you can put in all the work and then maybe not even get the chance. So yeah. Open auditions are open. Uh, yeah. We should all be like the Chicago. And important. Uh, I, I think it's worse that they told you that you were 47. Yeah, well, I emailed, I actually emailed them because I was like, hey, what are the chances of me getting off the wait list? Like, what are the chances? Like, am I like second? Am I 10th? Like, like, what, like, what are the chances? And they're like, no, ma'am, you're not going to. So the world we live in, it's, it's okay. Fine. I got over it eventually, but it did definitely like hurt my soul for like a week. <laughs> but it's not even a judgment on you. I'm sure they're looking for just like keywords in the resume. It's a resume round, right? So, and it's, I guess like the best advice that I could give like people, especially right now, if you want to want an orchestra job, go to a really good school to where you're going to get some playing experience. Mm -hmm. Like, because if you come out of school with like no outside playing experience, it's so hard to get past the resume round. Yeah. It is so Nobody hard. outside of your little region is going to know what, like, I don't know, Boston has a ton of little regional orchestras and nobody outside of New England is going to know how tiny they were. Like, they see you played with a professional orchestra. Great. There you go. Can you talk a little bit about your creative preparation process for upcoming performances? Do you like to score study, listen to recordings, play for mentors, or like what other things do you like to do to prepare? Well, first thing I always do is take my part and listen along with it. Um, you know, are, are there any surprise solos? Are there like weird stopped or muted things that I need to be prepared for? Is there anything that like on my, on my first scan through I discounted and I'm like, oh, that's actually important and hard. Let's look at that. Um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll do some practice. I'll, I'll play through things and, uh, once I sort of have a grasp on my part, I'll, uh, I'll look at the score and I'll see like when I'm with who, when am I with fourth horn, when is it just one and two, are there any spots where first isn't playing and I have a, an entrance like leading the rest of the horns or something because that can be a little like, oh god, his horn isn't up, is it, did I count right? 
So just um, sort of getting familiar with the whole piece at that point. Well, thank you so much, Helen, for being here and sharing your knowledge with the horn community. And I really hope you like have really good luck on your upcoming season. Thank you. And thanks for having me again.